On this edition of uh, Round by Round, we talk about how a boxing match, as evidenced by the recent uh, Fury Wilder fight, uh, which went back and forth, can turn the other way around in the blink of an eye. Mga kaibigan, alam nyo sa laro ng boxing, eh, minsan, uh, you know, may, 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 meron yamado, may dihado. Meron din na halos pantay yung labanan. At kung minsan, eh, ang laban mismo, eh, talagang balikan, ika nga, back and forth, so we can English. But uh, to ask a boxing expert like uh, Ryan Songalia, there have been a lot of fights that uh, uh, can turn the other way, di ba? In the blink of an eye, kumbaga, bigla na lang uh, magbabago yung ihip ng hangin uh, sa wikang Pilipino. Ryan, uh, explain to us uh, how these things happen in a boxing match. Well, you know, boxing is unlike any other sport because in baseball, you know, if you have bases loaded and a guy hits a home run, that's just four runs. But if you're down by 10, you know, you're, you're still losing by six. In boxing, you can hit a 12, 15 run home run. You can hit, instead of it's just a three pointer, you can hit a, a 50 point shot just because, because there is, it can turn around in a second like that. So that's what I think is the beauty of boxing is the theater of the unexpected. Um, just when you think a fight is over, um, one shot can literally turn it around. And, and, and then whatever happened in the previous five, six rounds doesn't matter anymore because they don't pay out bet, bets at uh, halftime, you know, in, in the middle of the fight. You got to make it to the final bell for any of that to count. So I think that's what makes boxing unique. And, and Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder showed that on the highest stage because, you know, there are so many times where boxing fights don't live up to the expectations but when they do and even when they exceed the expectations there's nothing better than that in all sports and i'm just glad that when people were watching boxing boxing lived up to all of the great things that it can be that fight was in many ways an advertisement for what boxing can be when it's done well when it's everything comes together it's a great time it's, you know, instead of just sitting around talking about the drama of the, you know, controversial scorecards, we got to see with finality, with conclusiveness, a heavyweight championship def, uh, champ, championship de- decided with one guy standing victorious and the other guy on the floor. That's the way it should be. Like Freddie Roach said, every fight should end in a knockout. Are there other fights uh, in, 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 past, uh, in past memory? Can you tell us about? other fights or other matchups that really uh, went this way, that uh, it was really back and forth. Uh, you really cannot tell who would be, who would come out the, uh, the victor. But as you've said, in the blink of an eye, the tide changed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, um, it's interesting because this, I count the Wilder Fury fights as one of the great heavyweight uh, championship trilogies. Now, you know, of course, you know, a lot of people feel that the fights that had in the past, you can't really compare them, uh, you know, because it's, you know, history. But I think this fight deserves to be belong with those. Now, when I'm thinking about the direct uh, comparisons, the fights that come up to me are Ingemar Johansson against Floyd Patterson, two guys oh, yeah, who... Yeah, yeah, I, I remember that. I remember that, yeah. They traded knockdowns like most boxers trade jabs. So... It's hard to really state which was the most violent of all the fights, but the first fight was very one-sided in favor of Johansson, who lifted the heavyweight championship. And then Patterson turned that around in the rematch and knocked um, Ingemar Johansson cold with a left hook that left Johansson's leg uh, twitching like a branch in the wind. It was kind of scary. And then the third fight kind of resembled the third fight of Fury Wilder where both guys get knocked down. You don't know what's going to happen. It can go either way. And in the end, it was uh, Patterson who stood victorious and he won the trilogy. Uh, Another fight that reminds me of, of the third fight is the Holyfield versus Riddick Bowe fight. Yes. Yes. Because that was a fight where, you know, the first two fights were very well competed but the third fight didn't have the heavyweight championship on the line. It had the heavyweight championship of each other on the line. And that was enough to really bring out the best of them. Both of them wanted to show that they were the better of the two. And that was, in my opinion, the most violent, destructive of those three fights. 
Now you had um, Riddick Bow was just beating up Evander Holyfield. Holyfield had had some heart troubles, uh, and he was uh, showing his energy levels were going up and down. And in that fight, Joe Cortez, the referee, actually brings in Flip Homansky, the uh, ringside official in in Las Vegas in those days. Yeah, and he's like telling him, "Listen, we're going to stop this fight. You know, you're taking too much punishment." You know, Cortez, I think, was also kind of trying to interject himself into a pivotal role in in the in the fight and. He had a, a nasty back and forth with uh, Tommy Brooks, the trainer of Holyfield. But that was enough to get Holyfield to wake up and, and show one last burst of energy. And he knocked down Riddick Bowe for the first time in, in, in Bowe's career. Yeah, Joe, going back, going back a bit. Uh, how about a, uh, a, a, a Tommy Hearns, uh, Sugar Ray Ren- Leonard and a Ali Frazier matchup? How were those fights as far as, far as the back and forth was concerned? I mean, in terms of the ebb and flow, yeah, I would say that uh, those were fights where, like, you know, in, um, uh, particularly the third fight of the uh, Ali Frazier, uh, that was the thrill in Manila. That was a fight where you, the, the up until the last few rounds, the result was up to be had because Ali w- was a big favorite in that fight. Frazier was kind of seen as washed up by that point, mm-hmm. but he was able to he had a style that was always going to give. Uh, Ali trouble and Ali pulled it out later in the fight. There, it wasn't like the big knockdown, drag him out kind of mm-hmm. war that we've seen with Fury Wilder because in, in that trilogy, there was only one knockdown. There was the um, when Ali was dropped in the, in the 15th of the first fight. Mm-hmm. Now, when you talk about uh, uh, Leonard and Hearns, the first fight that was back and forth as well because. Uh, Hearns was really getting to Leonard with the jab and, you know, uh, causing his eye to swell up. Uh, and then later on, we saw, you know, the tide, you know, the, the roles really switch where Leonard became the aggressor and Hearns became the boxer. Uh, but then the rematch, uh, I would say that that was actually, even though it was a less celebrated fight, I thought it was a more of a, a entertaining fight from a boxing action standpoint, because you had Hearns getting hurt, but then you had Leonard getting dropped twice. And that was called a draw, but even Ray Leonard said, yeah, you know what? I think Tommy Hearns got that. You know, a lot of we, we, we can still talk about a lot of the other matchups that have really uh, created a lot of uh, resonance as far as uh, the back and forth <laughs> of, of a fight is, so to speak. And we will do that in, in, in future conversations, Ryan. So, my uh, begin in terms of in terms of uh, how many fights or the, the many other fights that have uh, created a lot of conversation, even to this day, uh, as far as uh, fights that with that went back and forth and eventually uh, turned the other way in the blink of an eye. We will discuss more of that in future episodes of Round by Round. 